Well, first, I want to congratulate uh, Philip Montgomery and Luke Fickle on, on tremendous seasons and the uh, obviously uh, the Tulsa Golden Hurricane and uh, obviously the Cincinnati Bearcats. Great season. Uh, this is going to be a really competitive, outstanding championship game with, as you know, an awful lot at stake. Uh, so, again, I, I can go right to questions, Chuck. As you know, sure. I'm a bit out of pocket today, you know, so I'm trying to do this from a, you know, a public spot. But uh, thank you very much. Appreciate it. Great. No, th thanks for accommodating. Uh, we can, again, if you have a question for Commissioner, just uh, drop a note in the chat uh, indicating as such, and we'll get to you as soon as we can. We'll take the first question from Keith Jenkins from the Cincinnati Inquirer, please. Hey, Mike, good to see you. Um, Hi, Keith. First question is, Cincinnati's obviously happy to be playing this game at home. I, I think Tulsa would rather have it at their place. What kind of conversations were had at all in playing this at a neutral site? And is that something that you'll consider in the years to come? Well, we, we've always over the years thought about a neutral site, but we felt that the home site, it gives us the best opportunity. Uh, obviously this year it's not relevant because there, there won't be a crowd, of course. Um, but in the past, we felt that the atmosphere, everything would be better at a home site. This year, because the last game, Keith, was canceled because of COVID, we went with the, the winning percentage. Um, had there, there been a different situation, we might have considered a, a neutral site. But Cincinnati ended up ultimately, uh, you know, with, um, you know, the higher ranked. Uh, they ended up both at 6-0, I apologize. And uh, they ended up uh, at the higher ranked uh, CFP team. And that's what determined the home field. And we talked to Tulsa about it as well as Cincinnati. And uh, everybody was comfortable that that was the best decision that ultimately uh, we couldn't play that game because of COVID. It would have been played otherwise. Um, and because of that, we decided that it, it should be, uh, you know, uh, because the teams had both both gone six and zero in the conference, the CFP ranking would determine home site. And it's just the way it worked out this year. Other questions for the commissioner, please. We'll go to Garen Emig with Tulsa World, please. Hey, Garen. Uh, let's see, Mike, can you hear me? Uh, yes, I can, Garen. Garen, how are you? Good to see you. Um, gosh, we talked, uh, feels like six years ago, I think it was more like <laughs> three or four months about just your anticipation about how things might go. Uh, and we were all sort of grasping at, at straws back then, uh, if that. Can you give me a sense of how you, whether this season has been what you thought it would be uh, that, that has gone better, worse, all things considered, or are you not, you're not ready to quite go there just yet? Well, Gary, we're not quite there yet. You know, we're not out of the woods, but overall, obviously we played a full regular season. We played 90% uh, of our games. I think in the end it's, it's gone somewhat better than, than we could have hoped and expected. Um, you know, we knew there'd be some disruption along the way and there was. Although in the end, we were able to get in, you know, most of our conference games, and that was the key. We lost some non-conference games along the way that we obviously did not want to lose. But I think overall, it's, it's been successful in the sense that, you know, our student athletes, our coaches, they all did want to play. This is important to them. It's important to the, you know, their lives. And I think they've dealt with the pandemic extremely well. Uh, you know, we haven't seen transmission on the field. Uh, I think the protocols, the safety protocols have worked extremely well. So, you know, you have to be pleased about that. We've run into some, you know, some rougher sledding toward the end here as we, as we expected. I'm glad we started when we did, Karen, because if we had not, I think we would have uh, had some real issues uh, getting games in because, you know, the, the pandemic has ramped up with the colder weather and people being indoors more. But uh, I think the protocols have worked well and everybody uh, has, has done a, a, just a magnificent job working through this. And one of the things, one of the reasons I think teams that have played a full season, and even if you don't play maybe quite the same number of games as somebody else, if you've played a reasonable number of games like our teams have and have played the whole season, I think they deserve the benefit of the doubt because of what they've gone through. They've gone through. It's been very tough, as you know, and they've had to deal with it week after week after week. But I'm proud of them, and, and I think in the end, uh, you have to be pleased that we've gotten through the season the way we have, even with the disruptions that we've had. Thanks. We'll go next to Chad Brindell with uh, Bearcat Journal, please. Hi, Mike. Um, you were, you know, uh, openly kind of upset with the, the college football rankings last week with Iowa State jumping Cincinnati. But I'm curious, how important has it been to see Cincinnati kind of break that barrier of being into the top 10 in the CFP rankings and to open the door um, to, to have a team at that level? 
Yeah, that's important. And 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 yet, I guess uh, greedy is not the right word. We we we'd like to do better. You know, we still think that Cincinnati should be higher ranked. I think they should be in the top four. I'm I'm concerned about a couple of things. Teams, you know, with either one or two losses being ahead of them. Uh, Cincinnati's a really good team. I think the eye test proves it. They've, they've done everything we've asked them to do or anybody's asked them to do. They're going to be playing a very tough game against Tulsa. That's a really good team, as you know, uh, and who knows what the outcome of that will be. But yes, getting into the top 10 as early as we did and getting up to seven, but then getting jumped like that was really disappointing uh, because it didn't, to me, it's not defensible. It just isn't. And, and even, you know, there's some other teams above them. Uh, you know, again, I think number of games played is a very important, you know, metric. I really do, especially if you haven't played literally half or more of the season as well as playing very few games. So that's one issue. And then there's, some, you know, I, I just think that Cincinnati deserves a shot. I think they could, you know, they, who knows whether they, you know, they would play in Alabama, for example, and could, could they hold Alabama at under 52 points? You know, I think the committee's got to look at Cincinnati and say, this is a team that's worthy of the playoff. But yes, I have to be, you know, I was pleased initially. And then obviously it turned to disappointment because, you know, putting a two loss team uh, for just because it's a P5 team ahead of them, I think was very unfortunate. And to me, uh, Pat Forty wrote a column and he called it a P5 echo chamber. And that's a real concern for us. You know, we're still fighting that P5 battle because we, we think of ourselves as a P6 conference. Obviously, that's not our official status, uh, but we'll, we'll keep working at the, on that. Thank you. Go next to Paul Darty with the Cincinnati Inquirer, please. Uh, hi, Mike. Um, hi, Paul. Given what you just talked about and the circumstances that, that you're describing, what, what do you think is a realistic chance of a group of five uh, team breaking through to that four team playoff? Do you think the playoffs should be expanded? And do you also ever ponder the expenses involved, especially for a place like Cincinnati? to try to uh, dress itself up, for lack of a better term, to, to please the uh, Power Five conferences? Well, I think all our teams, Paul, have done a lot of that. We've, we've worked really hard to, uh, to be a, a P6 conference. I think we've, we've worked you know, hard to, you know, to deal with our finances, to uh, you know, spend the money that we needed to spend. Uh, you know, in terms of um, you know, the other issues, Right now, do I think we can get there some day? I, I would hope so. It was discouraging, though, to see what happened, you know, last week. And we'll see what happens now the next few days. You know, obviously, Florida losing, that, that had some impact. One of the concerns I had is obviously when you have teams jumping over you or being there to begin with, with one loss or, you know, two losses, makes it harder for us. I, I do think that this has got to become more, Paul, than a P5 Invitational. I mean, that's almost what it seems like because a Cincinnati, why, why isn't Cincinnati number four? They are a really good team. They've got an elite defense with probably seven or eight or nine people on that defense that, that could end up playing on Sunday. They're a well-balanced team offensively. They're, they're, the eye, they meet the eye test. They're undefeated. They beat a number of teams that were in the top 25 when they played them or were in there during the year. Uh, they, they scheduled Army a, a tough game, and they, and they won that without giving up an offensive score. Um, you know, when they lost the Nebraska game, they've done everything they've been asked to do. And, and our league, Paul, has proven how good we are. It's not as though if you put one of our teams in there, they would ever, you know, embarrass themselves. It's, these are great teams. You saw what UCF did. You saw what uh, Houston did prior to them. You saw what UCF did back in against Baylor in the uh, Fiesta Bowl. So I, I think our league has now shown it's a strong league. And it's hard to speculate. You know, I'm, I, I just hope the committee... Uh, you know, I saw some comments about teams, number of games played and whether teams should be involved. What I think you've got to start doing is, is separate, not separating out a G5 uh, team in our conference, especially because our conference has proven to be the top conference in the G5 and very close to the P P5, if not even better than some of the P5 conferences. And this year, Paul, it's interesting. You, you really do see a weakness among the P5 conferences that you probably haven't seen in the past. I mean, who would have thought that some of the premier teams are having the kinds of seasons they're having? Some of it's COVID-related, opt-outs, other kinds of things. But this is a year when I would think we would have an excellent chance. Uh, and again, we didn't want that chance. You know, we obviously, nobody wanted what happened. But the point is, I think Cincinnati, if they beat Tulsa, and that's going to be a tall order. Tulsa's a really good team. 
deserves that shot. And should Tulsa win, I think they would absolutely deserve a shot at a New Year's Day bid. But right now we're talking playoff. And I think that this league uh, has proven itself. And the question now becomes, can you get there? Is it, is it a P5 Invitational? Is it just a P5 echo chamber? When you see what happened, I'll, I'll close with, when you see what happened with that Iowa State situation, nothing against Iowa State. It's not a very nice team, but they lost by 17 points at home to Louisiana. They lost another game, you know, and, you know, it's not as though the Big 12 has been a stellar conference this year. It's, you know, nothing against them. I mean, you know, but, but the, you know, didn't the Sun Belt win three games at one point? In fact, uh, Arkansas State beat Kansas State, and the week before, Memphis had beaten Arkansas State decisively. So if you do the comparisons and all the different things, there's just no way a two-loss team should have jumped a team as good as Cincinnati. That's a P5 issue, and I think the committee's got to face that. So let's hope they do, and let's hope we can make some progress. Well, wouldn't expanded playoff satisfy your, uh, your – uh... Yeah, that was your other question. It would help. Uh, but we'd like an automatic bid to that if it ever happens. I mean, we don't think that we should be sharing it like we are now because – you know, this is a really good conference and you're going to potentially lose some games when you play in this conference. But yes, an expanded playoff would help. Is it likely to happen down the road? Perhaps. Um, I don't want to get in too much trouble talking about it because, you know, the, the you know, right now the CFP doesn't want to talk about it too much, but it's, it's on the back burner. But do I think it might happen down the road? Yeah, it might. And that would help us. Sure. Can take the next question from Morgan Beard from KTUL in Tulsa, please. And Mike, you kind of touched on Hi, it there. Morgan. Hey, how you doing, sir? Uh, you, you touched on it there. Cincinnati, obviously, getting a lot of the conversation because they're nearing the playoffs or have the best chance, obviously. But as a conference, how do you juggle maybe having the lead dog like Cincinnati right now and then maybe having a team like Tulsa that's kind of ascended in the way they played Oklahoma State early in the year, a game they very well could have won? Yep. Uh, is it – I'm trying to find a way to ask this question where you want maybe a team to be representing the college football playoff. But is it kind of maybe unfortunate or is it a good thing to have a team like Tulsa, if they do beat Cincinnati, to kind of show, hey, our conference is more than just one team? Or is it kind of a bad look because it kind of cannibalizes itself in a way? No, I don't think so at all. I'd like to see uh, 11 really good teams. You know, uh, the point is, uh, no, I think the stronger our conference is, the better. I and mean, look, Tulsa is a really good team and they could win. And if they do, I think they should they, they wouldn't have a shot at the playoff, you know, with with a loss. But I think the reasonable uh, expectation would be the, the New Year's Day, because, again, they play in a really good conference and they will have defeated, you know, the number six or seven, you know, eight team in the country, depending on where the, uh, you know, the committee ranks uh, Cincinnati. But no, I've always felt, well, that we should we should be a strong conference top to bottom. That's the only way you do it. And, you know, the SEC this year, maybe they're not as strong top to bottom, but in years when they have been, they've still had those elite teams you're still likely to have an elite teams. Like for instance, when, when UCF won, there were some really good teams in this league, as you know, there have been all the time, uh, Memphis and others. And when, uh, you know, Houston won in 2015, I mean, we had tremendous teams, you know, Memphis at that time, Temple were undefeated well into the season. Temple almost beat Notre Dame. Memphis beat Ole Miss, as you know, and Ole Miss had just beaten uh, Alabama. Navy had a great team that year. Cincinnati was very competitive. That's the kind of league that I think, you know, we're, we are and we're going to be. And that's why I do think these automatic bids that we want are very important because you're going to, you know, I don't cannibalize the right word, but you're going to beat each other. You know, it's going to happen. And, and again, Tulsa is a really good team. They're, they're, that's going to be a terrific championship game. As a commissioner, you don't root. You just want to see the best team win. But if Cincinnati should win, we think they should be a playoff team. If Tulsa wins, we think they should absolutely be a New Year's team. I'd love to see them in the playoff conversation, too. But, you know, you have to be realistic, too, in terms of what they would have to do to jump it. But and, they, and you're right, they, they easily could have beaten uh, Oklahoma State. You know, they went ahead late in the game and, and got called back on a motion penalty, you know, had the last drive. It was only 13-7. I think Zayvon Collins didn't play the second half. That was a terrific effort by, uh, by Tulsa. They were leading at the half 7-3. And, I, you know, Oklahoma State's been one of the better teams in the Big 12. So it uh, just shows what, what our conference is capable of. And a quick follow-up. You mentioned him there. My kind of angle all day has been asking, you know, Luke Bickle about Zayvon Collins. And, and you just mentioned him for me. So when you have Cincinnati and Tulsa as teams that kind of put the uh, the conference on the map, you have a player like Zavin individually getting nominated for all these awards. You know, there was some chatter even, you know, about a Heisman discussion earlier on this year. And, of course, all, all the uh, the defensive awards. How, how nice is it, I guess, from a conference standpoint to have an impact player like that kind of uh, get the attention and kind of put the conference on the map individually? He's a great player. You know, he, he should, certainly should have been one of those Heisman candidates, you know, uh, defensive players typically don't get that kind of attention, although obviously it's happened 
you know, once over the years. But Zavin is just a tremendous place, also a tremendous human being. You know, he's, he potentially could become a doctor down the road, study, you know, study medicine. Uh, he's, he's just a renaissance man and a uh, uh, tremendous talent. You saw that run back in the Tulsa game, and, uh, excuse me, the, uh, you know, the Tulane game. And that, I think, opened up the eyes of the country to Zavin. But, uh, yeah, to have a player like that, but also let's not forget Cincinnati with that secondary he might be the best in the country. I'm not sure there's a better one, you know, with Anquan Bush and, uh, you know, James Wiggins and, and Ahmad Gardner. I mean, these are some great players, you know, Kobe Bryant. I mean, you've got great players there. You've got a great defense overall. Um, you know, again, great quarterbacks in this game. Uh, you know, again, I, I just think we have balanced teams. And, and Tulsa is a rugged physical team. Cincinnati will have – it's hands full in a game like that. And as you know, they've dominated some good offensive teams the last, you know, uh, the last several games. So we'll see. And they haven't played in a little while. So that's going to be interesting to see both teams in a way because of what's happened in the last few weeks. Um, but uh, we'll see how it goes. But uh, uh, again, uh, I, I expect a great game. After two more, we'll go back to Garen Emick from Tulsa World, please. Yeah, Mike, borrowing, borrowing your phrase, uh, P5 Invitational. If to, to go back to the playoff situation, if in fact uh, that becomes reality and, and that <clears throat> that mentality sort of sinks in even deeper, is there a, is there a, a, a concern that the, the hue and cry from from the G5 becomes more to, more geared toward let's just go do our own thing enough of this let's just stage our own let's stage our own playoff. No, Garen, that would be a big mistake. Uh, that would mean we'd almost be admitting that we somehow play in a separate division. Of college football and that's not that nothing could be further from the truth look at our, our close to 50 wins against the p5 we're a p6 conference I, I i just don't think uh you know the media has yet fully appreciated that that's what we are um some have some haven't uh i think the playoff committee you know look the uh the five have their their group they're not likely to, to you know voluntarily let outsiders in we're going to crack that barrier though and i think they know deep down how good we are and how good our schools are. And not only that, Garen, the potential that our schools have still. I mean, look at UCF and USF and Memphis and the size of our universities, Houston, the resources we're putting into it, the coaches we now have in the league, everything points to you know continued and, and even greater success. So I would expect that we'll eventually crack the barrier. But the point is right now, the, the last thing we need to do is take a step backward and, and agree to any kind of G5 anything. Because yeah. you know, last year, I think we were 30 and two outside our, you know, outside the P5, and that included most of the G5 teams. We've dominated over the years. We're clearly viewed as the best G5 conference, and the label's killing us. It's an absolute killer, you know, because it hurts our teams when they when Look, Cincinnati was 18. Uh, excuse me, uh, Houston was 18th when they were 10 and 0 back in 2015. That team could have beaten anybody in the country. In 2016, we had those big wins, as you know, that Houston had against Oklahoma and Louisville. We've done it year after year. UCF had that winning streak and still couldn't get in. And I think the highest they got one year was 12th when they were undefeated and had a great team. So the G5 label has been a real problem. And, and to, to go back and, and say, look, we're, we're throwing in the towel. We're giving up. We're deciding to have our own playoff among the G5. To me, that smacks of a separate division in college football. And I think it would be a big mistake. Also, Garen, in terms of the P5 invitational business, the truth is, if you're never going to have a, P, a, a G5 team in, even as worthy as Cincinnati or as worthy as UCF was, then essentially you're, you're taking half of college football right now and saying, forget it, guys. And, and we're just not going to accept that. Okay, thanks. You're welcome. I'll take the last one from Brian Moss from Rivals.com, please. Hey, Mike. Uh, the previous years, uh, the championship game has been earlier in the day. Uh, this year, you guys have the primetime slot. How important is the uh, to have that primetime slot? Well, you know, it's a mixed a mixed blessing. You know, you're, you're playing at night and, uh, you know, you never know what, what the weather is going to be this late in the year. But um, we've had a good slot. You know, sometimes we've been at noon. You know, we've, I've just, we've been in the late afternoon where we went against the SEC, as we'll be doing this year. I think we astonished everyone by doing almost a three rating overnight a few years ago against a really good Alabama-Georgia SEC game. This year, uh, you know, we're obviously uh, in prime. That's a pretty good slot. You can't argue with it. Got a great, great uh, you know, uh, production crew doing the game. To be on ABC for our, uh, I guess, and Chuck can correct me, I guess it's our sixth straight year. Every year we've had this championship game, we've been on ABC. 
I think that shows how much uh, our partners at ABC ESPN value the league. Uh, so prime time, yeah, that's a great slot. Uh, let's hope that the weather cooperates, you know, in Cincinnati, and uh, we'll uh, we'll try to do our share with a great football game. Thank you. Mike, thanks for giving us a few minutes today. I uh, appreciate you joining us and look forward to seeing you in, as well in Cincinnati. Um, we will uh, conclude the press Thank conference you. there. We'll have a recording. We'll send a link out to everybody once we get that processed. It'll be available on our site as well as at www.theamerican.org slash football media. Thanks, Chuck. All right. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, everyone, for joining us. Thanks, Chuck. Thanks, everyone. Appreciate the questions. Thank you.